Well, semi-final all started, uh, what, ten and a quarter hours ago, just over. But there's still one more semi-final to come. It's the second of the men's singles, and it features the two-time former winner of the Denmark Open and the two-time reigning world champion, Kento Momota, up against Tommy Sugiato. Sugiato, who was in the final of the Denmark Open six years ago when he lost to Chen Long on finals day. So, as we talked before, there was only two seeds left at semi-final stage, the top two seeds. There'd only been five seeds, two in the top half by quarter-final stage. Two former finalists in the draw at uh, semi-final. And, the last match and the they're going to play against each other right now. Two-time former champion, Kenton Romalta against the beaten finalist from 2015. So here, the two-time reigning world champion, the current world number one, Kento Momolta. How many neutrals like myself would love to see an Axelson Momolta final. But I hope that Tommy Sugiato uh, plays well today. And nothing against Tommy Sugiato. It would be a wonderful, wonderful story if he was to get through to the final six years after he was first in the final. Eighth appearance here. But it was two years ago at this event, the Denmark Open, the last time he was in a semi-final. And he's been a little bit in the wilderness since then. So I suspect that his form is, well, it's nice to see. He's obviously coming back into form. But this is his first individual tournament of the year, Sugiato. This, the 11th meeting between these two players and Kento Momota has won the last five. And the last time they met was indeed in the semi-final of this event two years ago. His two titles, 2018 when he beat Chotian Chen, in three games in the final and then again a year later when he beat Chen Long in two straight games. He did enter last year. He was the number one seed but pulled out as did most of the Japanese players before the start of the tournament. 27 years of age, turned 27 last month, did Kento Momota. Born in Kagawa on Shikuku Island, enjoying his 116th week in total as world number one. Now, in the first round, he beat Toma Junior Popov. He then beat the 2017 winner, Kidambi Shrikan. In the quarter final against Jonathan Christie, I'm afraid all the uh, excitement and physical work that he did in both the Sudaman Cup and especially in the Thomas Cup caught up with Jonathan Christie and he had to retire at not 15 down in the second game. Tommy Sugiato is 33 years of age, 32 in the world rankings and that's because he's had a torrid time since his semi-final here at the Denmark Open has been as high as three on the world ranking, as you saw. First round against Juan Chilon, that was a good result. A second round, three games against the man promoted from the reserve list, Thomas Russell, and then a quarter final. He beat Samir Verma. He had won the opening game 21-17 when Verma had to retire injured. And remember, Samir Verma was the man who put out the defending champion, Anders Antonsen, in the second round. 
Ready to play? So that show hosts the name of Austria is our ump off this one and service judge called Kani. So Yusuke Nakanishi, the Japanese coach, looking a little bit nervous at the moment. I think most people are a little unsure of Tommy Sugiato's form. Both these men have been world championship medalists. Tommy Sugiato and bronze medal in Copenhagen in 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Kento Momota, Japan. And on my left, Tommy Sugiato, Indonesia. Kento Momota to serve. Love all. Play. So the reigning world champion, left-handed Kento Momota, getting the semi-final underway against Tommy Sugiato. Incidentally, when he won his bronze medal at the World Championships in 2014, Tommy Sugiato became the first player to emulate a parent by winning a World Championship medal. Of course, his father, Ichuk Sugiato, won gold in Copenhagen in 1983. For Sugiato, even when he was at his very best, when he was number three on the world ranking, doesn't really have too many winning shots. He's a great athlete, very physically strong. But when you come against uh, some of these top skilled players, it's difficult to know where he's going to win his points. That's in. Oh, goodness me, what the earth was Momota thinking there? Yeah, Rai smiled to himself. Extraordinary leave. The sky is dropped. It has to be said that this second lift there from Sugiato, not deep enough. Yeah, look where Momota's playing. That shot from, I always watch the players' feet where they land. A good indication of the depth of the opponent's shot.
That's going wide. A little disguise at the front of the court from the left hand up doing the damage. Sugiato having to change direction. Yeah, did you see that little stop before he had to push off to try and retrieve the net shot? Now that's nice. That's a lovely shot from Sugiato. Flick serve. Well, Kenta Momota very much looking in control at the moment. always making Sugiato twist and turn, change direction. And this, side and this I sort of alluded to a little earlier on because Sugiato I don't think has that same disguise with his shots and therefore it's easier for opponents to read what shot is coming. That was a perfect example. Kenta Momoto was waiting for the attacking shot down his backhand side there, waiting for the forehand. Yeah, that's nice. Well worked, Tommy Sugiato. Oh, was very powerful. And very loud in their support, the wonderful Indonesian fans. We love having them in the stadiums. No better at 
atmosphere than in his store Sanayat in Jakarta. for the advantage at the mid-game interval and the advantage to the reigning world champion. Nine minutes into the match. Was that Hendro Setia one? On the coach's bench there? I couldn't really see. So difficult to tell with everybody with their masks on. Certainly walked like Hendro Setia one. Oh, it's great to see him on the coach's bench after he's been struggling with his fitness. Yeah, all players know that. 22nd call from the umpire is an indication to return to court. Once again, Tommy Sugiato asked to stop and then change direction. Couldn't do it. Yeah, he's just not matching the pace of Momota. Sugiato has very much based his whole style of game around his physicality, his ability to run and retrieve. And I think now at the age of 33, perhaps slowed slightly, and that's having a big effect on his level of his game. Never really had a particularly big smash. Lovely backhand. Yeah. Once again, the accuracy of the attacking shot from Sugiato not good enough, and the left handed Momota very much waiting for that smash. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's landed in. doubts before the match started that Sugiato would be able to live with the pace of his opponent and certainly in the opening game he hasn't been able to at all nine straight points and it's called good Again, Mamota able to read what shot is coming from the Sugiato racket. Game point five. 20, game point five. Yeah, Sugiato putting his hand and knee down, I think. Oh, I just be mopped. Landed in right in the corner and on his third game point opportunity into Momolta. Takes the opening game 21 7. Yeah, lovely placement. 17 minutes for the opening game. <laughs> Dia rapat juga soalnya. Atau kayak tadi tahan-tahan dulu ada colongannya. Coba lagi aja. Ini berani capek aja dulu. Harus sabar sih, ulet dia. Hah? Iya. Nah, Mama baru balik seratus. Ayo coba lagi. Ya. とか、結構早かった。5点まで。あ、そこちょっと注意してもらいたい。ね。前詰めてて、こうセットね。ここはからスマッシュ的前詰めてきて、こうセット。そこのパターンで変わる。そこを押さえれば、ラリーゲームにな
、打点がちょっと下がらないことだよね、まずはね、しっかり高いところでさっとクリアして、そうすればさ相手スマッシュ連続できないから。そこだけ。ロボイをしっかりあの角いってるし。あとは油断しないで最初からね。気,気を引き締めて向かいが So very much in control in the opening game. The former champion here at the Denmark Open, Kento Mamota. of this man being back to the sort of speed that he was when he completely dominated World Badminton back in 2019. 12 finals from 16 tournaments that year. Winning 11 titles. Well, he's challenging. the court that I can remember from Sugiato. Nicely done. forward. Drifted wide.
Oh. Against the net court on the cross courts. After taking a very late Momota. Now that is a little bit lucky, isn't it? One of six athletes chosen to march into the Olympic Stadium in the opening ceremony with the Olympic flag on Malta. Great honour for him. In fact, they weren't all athletes. There was some Six, five. health workers, a whole variety of people. He's come back in. That's definitely a sideways drift. Yeah, good pressure from Momota. straight points and Sugiato needs to be awfully careful here rally Six to the mid-game interval with a five-point advantage. And that really, one of the big differences between these two players, the ability to put the shuffle on the floor.
Oh, that's a really tall order for Tommy Sugiato. It's so long since he's played at this level of tournament. Last tournament, in fact, altogether it was 19 months ago. The All England Championships of 2020. Spring's gone in the racket of Momota. Keeping in touching distance. And the last Indonesian to win the men's singles title here was 12 years ago. Simon Santoso beat Mark Schwebler in the final. Four Indonesian players in total have won the men's singles title here. Rudy Hartona, Lem Sui King, Hermawan Susanto, and of course, the man I've just mentioned, Simon Santoso. And I think it's going to be another year before they have another chance. I can't see Tommy Sugiato coming back in this semi final. Shot from the Indonesian. Wow. Yeah. Wonderful smash. He's got a good cross court from that round the head position as well. Very accurate, well placed. Yeah. Well, Sugiato won the rally, but that exemplified what I was talking about earlier that there isn't enough disguise on his overhead shots and his smashes because Momolta was waiting for the forehand defense, then he read the smash down his backhand side.
Well, the last time that Tommy Sugiata actually beat his opponent of today, you have to go back to the Japan Open six years ago, 2015. And I don't think he's going to be able to emulate that here today. Romolta just four points away from in place in the final once more. shuffle back to the same place twice and Sugiato had been expecting the straight one and backhand side next one comes back down again to the backhand side need to twist and turn it down the line. Watch where this lands. Just inside that singles court line. Fabulous accuracy. Point opportunities. Nine of them for the two time former champion Kento Momota. Oh, that's a brilliant smash. If only had been able to do that a little more often. Seven, 21 12 the margin of the victory for the reigning world champion Kento Momota beating the beaten finalists from six years ago Tommy Sugiato in two straight games well that means that Kento Momota is through to a third final here at the Denmark Open. 38 minutes for his victory. And as I said a little earlier, glimpses of the Momota that we saw back in 2019. Good movement, sharp with his attacking play, able to inject pace. And it seems to me that over the last three or four weeks, he's been able to play himself more and more back into form. Confirmation of the score, 21-7, 21-12.
So that concludes semi-finals for the day, which started a little over 11 hours ago. And it all started with a mixed doubles and Yuta Watanabe and Orisa Higashino, oh, the Olympic bronze medalists beating the Olympic gold medalists, Wang Ilu and Huang Dongping, in a repeat of that Olympic semi-final. Needed three games to do it, though. And then it was women's singles, and it was a battle of the two World Championship bronze medalists from the World Championships three years ago. Kane Yamaguchi came through that one against Herbing Zhao. Two very close games, so though she'd been well up in that second game. And then it was the second of the mixed doubles, and uh, Puavara Nukro and Teira Tanachai, beaten finalists here at the Denmark Open three years ago, had to a win on their third match point opportunity. They'd been 2018 up in that deciding game. And then it was the first of the women's singles, and Ang Si Young, the teenager from Korea, beat Kirsty Gilmore, the first player from Scotland in a World Tour Super 1000 semi final in any discipline. And my goodness me, didn't Kirsty Gilmore put up a wonderful fight against the number five seed? 21 16 deciding game just short of the hour mark. Then it was the first of the men's doubles and the World Championship silver medalists, Hoki and Kobayashi, uh, beating the European uh, Championship semi finalists, uh, Seidel and Lamsfuss. I do beg your pardon, they were the uh, silver medalists at the European Championships, I do believe. Then it was women's doubles, the first of our women's doubles matches, and Wang Dongping and Zheng Yu continued their good form. They had beaten the Olympic champions in the quarterfinal. Today they beat Kitty Harakun and Prajongjai in two straight games. Then the second of the men's doubles and the home uh, players of Astrup and Rasmussen the only seeds left in the men's doubles at semi-final stage, had been a game and 13-5 up. Somehow they lost that second game, but uh, they regrouped in time to win the decider 21-18 in two minutes shy of the hour mark. Then it was the second of the women's doubles and it was a repeat of the Olympic bronze medal match, uh, but in a reverse of the result in Tokyo. Here in Denmark, Lee So Hee and Shin Sang Chan won on this occasion. This was the longest of our semi finals, an hour and 23 minutes before the 2017 winners won 21 16 in the deciding game. Then it was uh, the Olympic champion, Victor Axelson, in the first of the men's singles against the unseeded Lee Chiek Yu. And for Victor Axelson, he has reached his first ever. Denmark Open final and wasn't it convincing 21-9 21-11 in just 34 minutes the uh, two-time reigning world champion Kento Momoto was next against the beaten finalist from six years ago Tommy Sugiato almost as impressive as Victor Axelsson beating the Indonesian 21-7, 21-12, setting up a wonderful final with the world champion against the Olympic champion in the men's singles final tomorrow. So finals tomorrow at 12 noon local time, that's 1000 GMT from all of us here in Odense. Until the finals tomorrow, bye for now.